Hello, everyone, and welcome to this demo. I'm Bowen, and I'm a junior at Harvard College studying computer science and statistics. And I've been part of the Mamu Lab at the Department of Pathology for almost two semesters now. And uh, in this group, we work on artificial intelligence for pathology and image analysis. Um, so yeah, for some logistics, I'll be running this demo in rotations, and we'll just be keeping it short so you guys can check out all the demos and um, people can join in the middle. And like, if people join in the middle, we can just have them wait for the next rotation. Um, yeah, if you have questions, please post them in the chat in the demo menu so that it can be saved. Um, yeah, so today I'll be demoing a low cost 3D printed microscope capable of capturing high resolution images of whole pathology slides. And these images can then be fed into a pre-trained model to achieve real time point of care diagnosis of these samples. Um, yeah, so th there's the question of why, like what, what, what is the purpose of trying to achieve real time and point of care diagnosis? Um, well, there's a shortage of pathologists in actually the developing areas. Um, according to a study in the Lancet, in the US, there's one pathologist for every 20,000 individuals, while in Sub-Saharan Africa, there's only one for every million. But um, even with current telepathology systems for cancer diagnosis, uh, they mostly rely on pathologists performing remotely, which would be low throughput and requires more time and resources. Um, so just let me give a quick overview of um, the process for deep learning for pathology flow um, before we, and then just get to the demo. Um, so what we do is um, the typical workflow would be um, having a whole site image and we would extract regions of interest. And then we would train the convolutional neural, neural network based on the ground truths from different classes. And even though it's shown to the, the these deep, deep learning methods are shown to be um, accurate and can achieve objective diagnoses, um, they usually require, um, especially these supervised methods, they require manual labeling of, uh, for example, like pixel level annotations or manual highlighting of um, regions of interest. Um, so what we do is we use a weekly supervised approach and using this method, like only um, slide level labels are enough to train the model, um, which basically cuts down a lot of the uh, resource intensive processes like, um, uh, uh, like pixel level annotations and manu manual annotations. Um, and that allows us to train these models at a much larger scale. Uh, so we developed uh, CLAM, which has been recently accepted to Nature Biomedical Engineering. And the typical workflow for CLAM would be, um, we would have a, a whole pathology slide. And from that, we would segment the tissue. We would uh, create patches. And from the patches, we would um, uh, run, run it through the model. And it, the model has an attention backbone that assigns a attention scores to each patch. And from that, we can we, we have our feature extraction pro process that ultimately leads to um, uh, the final prediction, uh, the final classification of the slide. And from the attention scores, we can create these interpretable heat maps that show um, which, sec which areas of the slide the model is attending to the most, uh, th which um, is influencing uh, its final prediction. Um, yeah, so we we tested this on a lot of different disease models. Uh, um, I, here, I, I'm just going to show the results for renal cell carcinoma. Um, so yeah, from our results, we were able to achieve um, very high accuracy. Um, and even with just training from the TCGA data set, we were able to adapt it to um, the Brigham, like the uh, slides from the Brigham, and also achieve a, a high accuracy. And here are just some of the examples of uh, the heat maps generated, which uh, you can see match uh, the highlighted regions. Um, yeah, let me just uh, uh, send out this link real quick. Um, all right. Yeah, so um, if you go to that link, you can, it basically takes you here, um, which is a demo of our, um, what our mo model is capable of. And this is basically a side-by-side -side 
of, um, well, this is a biopsy, but um, this is a side-by-side -side of the tissue sample and um, the heat map generated after being run through our model. Um, yeah, if you go to, you can go to this site and like play with it yourselves, but there's um, a lot of, um, there's several different studies and you can also look at different samples within each study and you can zoom, zoom in, uh, see which regions uh, from the base on the heat map that the model is uh, attending to the most. Um, all right, let me get back to the slides. Um, yeah, so what we also found was that uh, even training the model on host site images and testing them on uh, images acquired from a microscope using uh, using a smartphone, we were still able to, we, we, we didn't suffer a big loss in the accuracy, um, which leads, and these are just some of the examples, the, 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 the the left region is um, the cell phone image, and the right is um, the right are the uh, heat maps generated by the model. And um, so this basically led us to think about designing a standalone microscope that would um, acquire images and would um, run feed the images into our model to which would essentially achieve um, the real time point of care diagnosis that we want. Um, but so what is the purpose of a standard standalone microscope? And so the, a standalone microscope basically has um, several advantages over taking um, images from a microscope using a cell phone. Uh, just taking images using a cell phone would require cloud computing to process these large images and also to be run through the model. And that would be resource intensive, especially when you consider um, the resource constraints that uh, are in the low resource conditions. Um, and, but if we create a standalone microscope and we use, we integrate it with embedded deep learning, that basically allows us to run the model locally, um, which would be cheaper and easier to use in low resource conditions. And for, uh, for running the model, uh, we ported our model on an NVIDIA Jetson Nano for deep learning, which um, is also not expensive at all. Um, so yeah, let me just show our microscope setup real quick. So we're basing our design on an open source 3D printed microscope. Um, uh, so our setup is basically like this. Um, this is our microscope main body and here's where our objective lens goes. And for, for this demo, we're using a, a 20X objective. And the objective lens is connected to the um, to a Raspberry Pi camera module uh, way under underneath there. And um, it's connected through the optics module, which um, is this black tube here. And inside the optics module, we added a tube lens, which uh, the purpose of that is just to shorten this length here to make the microscope more compact. And that also uh, creates some extra magnification that, would, that, that we want. Um, and the optics module is connected with uh, to these gears at the back, uh, these mechanisms at the back that look look like these, which um, helps us achieve focusing. And what it does is that turning the gears basically move the adjust the flexures so that um, this entire module is able to gently move up and down, and that is what uh, allows us to achieve the focusing. And up top is the illumination, which is essentially just a cheap LED with a tube, and we added a condenser lens there to, for um, higher resolution imaging. Um, and way at the bottom there is where the Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi camera sits and you can see with the mess up wires. Um, we also added on a, um, a touch screen, which, um, is, which uh, just helps to make the whole setup more portable and easier to use in a low resource setting. Um, so yeah, uh, let me just, um, so yeah, let me just show like the process of imaging a slide. In terms of actually imaging a slide, it's just very straightforward. We can just put a slide on on the stage, and then um, we can adjust the focusing a little. And um, yeah. All right, so um, 
Yeah, from the screen, you can't really, like the webcam doesn't really show the screen very well, but um, I've, I've added some, uh, th which is why I took some images beforehand and fed it through the model. And I'll just uh, show that real quick from the slides. Um, so yeah, this is just an, an example of uh, an image that we took uh, from the microscope here on the left. And uh, this is the resulting heat map generated from, um, from uh, after being run through our model using the Jetson Nano. And you can see um, the heat map uh, shows like the uh, relevant regions that are attended to by the model. And uh, these are just some more images. And um, yeah, for the sake of time, I'll uh, end this. Okay, and um, yeah, so, Thanks everyone for coming. And if you guys have more questions, you can drop them in the chat or um, you can email us.